everybody. Hey, uh, welcome to our live webinar. We are SME Strategy, um, and we are excited to be here with y'all today to share with you our strategic planning process at the high level. Uh, and we know you're going to walk away with some great information from today's webinar. So we're so psyched to be here with y'all and share that information. As you're joining, if you wouldn't mind in the chat, uh, please pop in, you know, your role, a little bit about yourself, where you are in the world. Uh, we just uh, sort of like to get to know you a little bit as we're getting rolling. So thanks so much for being here. We'll get started with content in just a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, please introduce your all selves in the chat. Again, thanks so much, everybody, for joining. So excited that you're here with us today. Uh, we are SME Strategy. My name is Jen Skumachi. Uh, I am a senior facilitator and also manager of the strategy and leadership community at SME Strategy. We'll tell you more about that uh, at the end of today's session. Um, but just want to make sure that as you're joining, um, please pop into the chat a little bit about yourselves, where you're at, uh, what your role is. Um, and I'll turn it over also to my co-host here today, Anthony Taylor, to introduce himself. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Great to meet you. My name's Anthony, uh, calling from Vancouver, BC. Uh, just really excited about sharing our strategic planning process. Uh, we've been developing this for, well, about 14 years now, and so it's continually iterative. Um, so we're really excited to bring you, you know, our kind of 2024 version of our strategic planning process that you can uh, adapt and use. Um, and then if you think it's a good fit for your organization and you're looking for somebody to lead it, um, that we can support you with that as well. But really grateful to just uh, have you here today and great to meet you. And looks like there's folks all over the world here. So very, very cool. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. So a little bit about SME strategy, as Anthony said, um, we'll share some resources at the end of today's session about how we can be helpful for you in applying what you learned today. Uh, and, you know, in general, just want you to know that we're here as a resource. We help organizations create and implement their strategic plans. We do it through a variety of mechanisms, um, coaching, strategic planning meetings, live facilitation, virtual facilitation, um, executive uh, coaching, training workshops, courses, the community, as I referenced earlier, and we'll give you some more information on that too. Um, but just a, a slew of information um, that we're uh, eager to share uh, to just help make the world better at strategic planning and leadership and management. Um, we've got uh, offices in Greater Vancouver, Victoria, Edmonton, Canada, and then in the States, we're represented in Atlanta and the Boston area. I am uh, I sit just north of Boston, uh, and we have helped hundreds of organizations across industries uh, develop their strategic plans and implement their strategic plans uh, over the past uh, 13 or 14 years. Uh, so we're certainly excited to share what that process has looked like with you all on today's call. Uh, so as we get started, we want to, again, learn more and more about you uh, and sort of get a sense for where you're at, you're at in, in your strategic planning. So uh, we've got a poll that we would like to share with you all. Uh, and we're just going to give you a minute to um, read these questions and answer them to the best of your ability. So the first question is we or statement to which you might agree with is uh, we use a regular strategic planning process. And we'd like you to invite you to say either, yeah, you do or no, you don't, depending on um, you know what your role is, whether it's at an organization or as an independent worker. Um, do you use a regular strategic planning process? Uh, the second question is, do you involve stakeholders in strategic planning? So as a statement, uh, we involve strategic we involve stakeholders in strategic planning, yes or no. We're starting to see responses roll in here. This is awesome. Uh, the third question or statement in the poll is we have processes and resources in place to support successful implementation of strategy. Uh, and lastly, the last statement is our overall process for driving strategy is effective. Um, and so we're starting to see some of these um, uh, responses roll through which is awesome. We're just going to leave this open for another moment and then we'll close it so that y'all can see the responses as well. Um, it right now looks like um, about half of y'all use a regular strategic planning process. About half of y'all don't. 
Uh, looks like about uh, two thirds of y'all involve stakeholders in your process and about uh, one third do not. Uh, looks like about halvesies again, when it comes to processes and resources in place to support implementation. Um, and looking like about half of y'all are unsure as to whether your overall process in driving strategy is effective. So um, I think with just a, a few people left, we can go ahead and close out that poll. A few people just haven't responded, but for the most part, I think we've got good representation here. I'm gonna go ahead and share the results with y'all. So as you can see, uh, as I said, about half of y'all use a regular process. Um, so this is going to cover the SME strategy process that we use. So um, hopefully it will be valuable whether you have one or not. If you do already have one, uh, hopefully this will help you refine it and improve it a little bit. Um, involving stakeholders in strategic planning, you'll learn in our process. That's very important. It looks like about two thirds of y'all already do that. Um, for the remaining one third, hopefully you'll learn some good tips from us today to incorporate that. Um, again, about halvesies, uh, half of y'all uh, have the stuff in place to support your implementation, um, and about half of y'all are indicating you don't. And so again, hopefully you'll learn some of the tools that we use in our process and be able to adopt those and implement them yourselves. Uh, and lastly, in terms of effectiveness of driving um, your pro overall process, uh, it looks like about half of y'all are unsure whether your process is effective. So again, hope hopefully being here today and learning about the SME strategy, strategic planning process uh, and implementation process will um, help you elevate the work that y'all do in strategy as uh, leaders. So thanks so much for playing along. Here are the goals for our session together today, our time together today. We'll be together for uh, less than an hour. We typically shoot for about 45 minutes. I am happy to stick around and answer any questions after we present um, what we've got lined up for you. Uh, our primary goal in these webinars is to connect you to each other. And again, I'll talk more about the strategy and leadership community where we do that every day uh, toward the end of our session. Uh, again, we're going to share the SME strategy, strategic planning approach and process with you. We're going to do it at a very high level uh, and uh, are happy to answer, uh, stay and answer any questions you might have about what we present. Um, and then uh, lastly, we want to share with you some of the resources um, that we have available for you. Some of them cost money, some of them don't. Uh, some, All of them certainly take time and energy, and we hope that the process we tee up for y'all today gets you excited to invest a little bit more in um, you know, how, how you continue to do strategy work in the work that you do. So I'll kick us off here by just um, sort of regrounding us in what we mean by what uh, by strategic planning. So what is strategic planning? Um, from our end, a strategic plan is a document. It contains the words behind your organization's desired future state and the work items that will get you there. In our process, we um, really work to uh, get a team to alignment around what that desired future state and the work items look like. And so the document um, mainly just captures what those words are. And it is not ultimately what is the most valuable thing in strategic planning. It do documents what is the most important thing, which is the process used to create it and to share it and communicate it with the rest of your, your team. So the document does have importance uh, in that it is uh, recording all of the uh, process that has led you to your strategy and it is recording, it is a record of the aligned future that you desire and how you'll work toward it. But the real value in strategic planning is the work behind creating that document and then using that document to share and communicate and cascade your plan to the rest of your organization or, or stakeholders. I'm going to turn it over to Anthony um, and have him say a few words about why the process is so important. Yeah, thanks, Jen. So, I mean, that's the the really important distinction here is the document versus the direction and the choices. And I'll tell you, you know, 14 years ago when I was kind of trying to figure out what I was going to do with my consulting practice at the time, I was writing business plans and marketing plans for people. And I was involved on two nonprofit boards in my local community. 
And while everybody was really well-intentioned with what they did, it was like herding cats. We were focused on too many things. We had limited resources. We couldn't figure out what we wanted to do. And I was chairing one of those boards and I said, well, what the hell am I going to do to help us move forward? And, and that's how I discovered strategic planning. The ultimate like act of having to say no to stuff and saying yes to certain things helped our boards, the two boards that I was working with, focus on a singular purpose, a singular direction, told us who we weren't going to focus on. Um, and it really helped us make more impact. And that's why I really loved strategic planning, because when your team is focused and organized, you can ultimately accomplish what you want to accomplish and everybody can win. So that's why having a strategic plan, that's why having strategic direction, that's why we do these webinars is to support your team in being successful, to help your employees be happy and engaged. Um, and ultimately, whether you're a for-profit or non-for-profit organization, um, to help you um, get the outcomes that you want. So, you know, why strategic planning, why is a good process important so that you can identify and outline your, what we call one destination, like what does success look like and how will we know if we get there so that you can maximize resources. I have yet to find an organization that has unlimited time, money, and energy. And so you can't do everything. So focusing on what are the most important things um, so that you can be proactive instead of reactive. Uh, gosh, we know over the past couple of years, the changes have been happening fast and furious and there's no kind of letting up. And so being uh, responsive in your plan, uh, a lot of people have a document that was from like three years ago, but gosh, the amount of change that's happened. So building a plan that's adaptive, uh, making sure that you can continuously iterate based on changes internally, whether that's new staff, new opportunities, new changes, what have you, um, and then really keep your team moving forward. Um, I don't know how many, I won't ask how many of you have seen like a shelf plan, um, but having a good process to support not only the alignment, but the implementation is critical. And that's why we want to share this so that you can borrow our process and use it and help you move forward. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. So as Anthony referenced, yes, strategy is about choices. Um, it's about knowing what to do as much as it is about knowing what not to do. Uh, and so ultimately, um, the process and the document, your strategic plan, in essence, tells people what they should be focused on, what they should be doing. Um, and it increases the efficiency with which you can move towards your one destination because people don't need to check in every single time that they're about to do something. They know the direction. They know what work items they're responsible and accountable for. Um, and they don't have to every single time check in. They have the knowledge they need to do. Um, they they need to do the work that, that um, is needed of them in moving forward your plan. Um, so a well-communicated strategic plan improves your productivity, uh, enhances the culture overall of the organization because people feel aligned to it. Um, and people feel empowered to be able to take the actions that they know they need to take to be able to help drive the strategy forward. And overall, having a solid strategic plan and a process that leads to that um, ultimately improves your overall uh, effectiveness as an organization in delivering on the outcomes that you want to deliver on. Uh, so ultimately what we, oh, yep, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to highlight, sorry, whenever you're done, Jen, and I'll- No, go with. for it. Okay, cool. Why we really want to emphasize this why is because some folks might say, oh, we don't have time to spend two days in a strategy retreat or we're like so busy doing stuff that we don't have time to do this. And we really want to emphasize that like, yes, it's an upfront investment that takes time, uh, but the outcomes are so much greater. Um, it'll help you be, and I know you're going to cover this, a lot more effective and efficient down the road. Um, but asking people, you know, why they think a strategic plan is important will help them get it on board. And I know that many of the folks on the call are leading these processes internally. So we want to equip you with not just the what, but the why so that you can get like bought into doing it properly. No doubt. Uh, 
Uh, so Anthony, you want to uh, talk with us a little bit about the overarching approach? And and y'all, this is such a treat for me as well to hear Anthony talk about this because um, this is the work of the 14 years of SME strategy um, that you know he and you know now we uh, are working together to um, you know really bring to organizations uh, to help them uh, drive forward their strategies. So this is sort of where it all begins in the SME strategy process. And so Anthony, I would love to hear you share. Um, with our participants a little bit about um, the background of this and, and what it all means. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, folks, like, please feel free to use this. Like, this is why it's public domain. Uh, so you can approach this. So, you know, the number one problem that we solve as an organization is helping folks escape the multiple destination trap. If you want to screen capture this and, you know, walk it through with your team, say, hey, what is it? What does this person look like? You know, they, it looks like they're confused. It looks like they have a lot of different options in front of them. Uh, if you think about multiple destinations, it means that there's a lot of different places that we could be going and then think about it as a trap because some folks think that having a lot of opportunities is great, but ultimately you end up spinning around in circles because you're not sure which one you focus on. And so if you ask your team, like, hey, what does success look like for us in 2027? Would everybody have the same answer? And ask that question. If they all have a different answer, you're all going to different places, which means you're going to prioritize different things. You're going to have different expectations. It's going to create frustrations as a team, or you have a vision that is conceptual and nobody actually knows where they're going. And we see that so often with leadership teams, for-profit or not-for-profit. Um, and so, you know, you get stuck there. So our solution to that or what we recommend to folks is what we call our one destination model, aligning on one destination. If success was a place, how would we know if we got there? And that includes, you know, a clear and aligned vision, which is that end state 2027 or 2029, depending on where you're at. Your mission, who are you, what do you do, and who do you do it for, which also includes who do you not do it for, where do you focus the bulk of your energy values and behaviors. How do we do things around here? And we look at culture as a driver to performance, which you can talk about more later. Uh, cascading it down into three high-level priorities. Today, I, I'm using one of my favorite mugs, which you might not be able to see. It says, don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. So that's the whole concept of prioritization. Uh, and then goals, you know, measurements. How are you going to know if you get there? And then actions. So cascading all the way down. Uh, for those of you that are mission-based or nonprofits here, you might find that flipping the mission, vision, or orientation uh, is a better fit for you. But fundamentally, it's ensuring that there's alignment between your vision, your mission, your values, your strategic priorities, your goals and actions. And all of them are um, in or out statements. You're either living your vision or you're not. You're either doing your mission or you're not. You're either living your values or you're not. You're either prioritizing on these things or you're not. You're either doing actions that drive forward your goals and objectives or you're not. And you're either doing important stuff or you're not. And that outcome will support cascading an effective plan across your organization so everybody can be successful. As you can imagine, I could talk for hours just about this, but fundamentally going from a bunch of different places to everybody aligned on one place will immediately help you have greater impact uh, wherever you're at. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. And yeah, so this sets the stage for everything else we're going to talk about today. This is the foundational aspect of our approach and our process. So let's share with you what that overall process kind of looks like. Um, so uh, Anthony, did you want me to take a shot at this or did you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so ultimately, um, when we look at strategic planning, we really look at a an overall strategy process and black and we black, back up from you know what i think a lot of teams think of as strategic planning you know strategic planning um, in a lot of organization looks like creating an actual document and what we really do is we pull you back up 100,000 feet and say let's look at an overall strategy process Okay, so the first thing we really recommend to clients is to engage your stakeholders. And we'll talk, talk a little bit about what that looks like. But what are your people saying? What is the what are the inputs you can collect from the people who touch your organization and who your organization touches uh, to be able to really get a feel for how they see the current state of your organization? as well as what they see as your one destination. And then um, we encourage and work with clients to capture that feedback and um, put it into um, the actual strategic planning process. So really, you know, in our 100,000 foot view, starting with collecting information from the people in and around your organization 
uh, is important as input into the start of creating your strategic plan. And Anthony is going to walk us through the um, more of the details that you see here in this middle section of our strategic planning and alignment process. Um, and in this process, we have five major um, activities that we facilitate with teams. We facilitate where are we now through a series of activities and help set the current state, an aligned current state. Um, we then talk about, okay, then where are we going? What does the aligned vision for our future look like? Then we talk about what might get in the way, what are the values and the risks that um, we need to either demonstrate or mitigate along our path. Um, what do we need to do? What are the priorities and goal focus areas um, for us to be able to drive forward to our one destination? And then lastly, what do the actions ar around our strategic plan look like? What's the actual work plan and what are the actions? Um, but also what are the communication um, elements we need to incorporate to effectively cascade this? And what are the things we need to put in place to be able to implement? And that leads to the um, sort of third and final air quotes, because I think there's so many ways. This is one process, one approach, right? This is what we offer. Um, and this is um, sort of the last step in um, our overall process, which is implementation. Although again, I'm kind of using air quotes because when you think about it, this is kind of a cycle, right? And you wanna be always um, sort of revisiting stakeholder input and always be revisiting strategic planning. Um, but in the overall process, the last step is to really get to implementing. And we believe there are six critical capacities um, that any organization has and can develop uh, for successful strategic implementation. And so we will cover that um, as well um, when we go through each of the, the major steps of this process. Um, before I um, jump into stakeholder engagement details, I do want to note the bottom, um, the bricks sort of that you see along the bottom of this visual. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are the foundational pillars that we at SMA Strategy, it's, it's how we see the foundations of organizational effectiveness for strategy in, uh, coming to life, right? So in the foundation of any organization to be able to effectively develop and deploy strategy, we believe organizations need to really have strong strategic and critical thinking, um, strong leadership and strong operational system, operation systems and processes. And so these pillars, we, we, we call them pillars, we're always keeping this in mind as we develop our content, our services, our offerings, and we're always challenging the clients we work with to consider these three pillars as the foundation um, for how they bring forward strategy with, within their organization. So this visual kind of just gives you an overview, again, from the 100,000 foot view of the process that we use at SME Strategy with our clients to help them develop and implement strategy. Um, Anthony, is there anything you wanted to add? No, I mean, I think we'll get into it the high level. You know, we'll talk about the stakeholder engagement, you know, as we think about the strategic planning process. You know who are those those folks that you want to talk to? Um, so whether that is the board or staff or outside folks, um, and then to like use that to inform your decisions, and then you know bridging the strategic planning process through that stakeholder engagement. But no, no, I think I mean we could talk for hours about it. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no doubt the information you're getting here from us in like 45 minutes could be a week long work leadership workshop, no doubt. We're giving you just just the scratch of the surface. So as Anthony mentioned, let's let's jump into stakeholder engagement. That's sort of the first part of the process that we look at um, when we're working with clients. So, you know, we really strongly encourage people to talk to their people. Um, so what is stakeholder engagement? It's the process of asking for input and using that input then as a consideration in your planning process. Um, why do we do this? Um, because people tend uh, people want to be involved, right? If you're rolling out a new strategic plan for your organization and um, stretch that out to the external people that your strategic plan will impact, your clients, your vendors, your partners, community, et cetera, um, people who are more involved in that process will be more, more bought in to what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So buy-in is really the major why behind stakeholder engagement. Let's bring people in, understand where they're at, and then keep them bought in through the process as we implement um, the strategy that we design. 
And so ultimately the, the information and, and as Anthony was saying, you know, sometimes for organization, it comes from boards. Sometimes it comes from, you know, oftentimes what we see is it, an executive leadership team and it might look different for different organizations, but oftentimes a leadership team is the team behind uh, leading the charge on the strategy and they're collecting inputs from let's say their board um, and maybe their manage their next level of managers in the organization maybe they're collecting input from their entire organization if that's manageable maybe they're collecting information from community stakeholders um, clients vendors you know as as we've discussed all having all of this information as you start your strategic planning process, is vital because it helps you to understand what are all of these various constituents? How are they seeing the current state of our organization and how are they seeing the successful future of our organization? And it helps you to really, uh, you know, get uh, assess gathered and assessed effectively helps you to make effective decisions in the strategic planning process. Um, so oftentimes this looks like uh, clients hiring us to come in and um, conduct surveys for them, uh, where we ask specific questions and collect feedback from various stakeholder groups. Uh, and then we um, crunch that data, so to speak, uh, into themes and help organizations see, um, you know, what their their various stakeholders are saying about the organization. Uh, we also follow up those stakeholder surveys with engagement or visioning sessions where we ask a series of questions um, to, you know, really invite people to share, again, how they see the current organization in terms of strengths, weaknesses, um, and what do they see as the successful future in terms of, you know, a vision and or any immediate actions that could help get us there. So it also does look like sometimes organizations doing this on their own uh, and not having us as facilitators. In any case, we could, can't overemphasize the importance of including stakeholder engagement, not only on the front end of a strategic planning process to sort of kick it off, um, but also in terms of communication throughout the process. Uh, you know, and we oftentimes work with teams as, in post strategy uh, stakeholder engagement as well to ensure that communication um, is consistent and continuous uh, and ongoing. Um, before I jump off of this segment, I also will say uh, that as a precursor to stakeholder engagement, uh, one of the uh, pieces of work we also do with clients oftentimes is stakeholder mapping to really help organizations get intentional about where their st various stakeholder groups sit and, and how to engage them um, as effectively as possible in this process. Um, you know, so so we have a ton of resources on this. And as we move through this, I'm also going to share some information in the chat uh, as further re reading that y'all are able to um, access and um, it will just expand on what we talk about here today. So I'll turn it over to Anthony and I'll share that link in the chat for you. Awesome. Yeah. While you do that, like one of the things that people don't always consider is that you can't implement your strategic plan without these folks on board. So, you know, it might be, you know, there's the obvious ones, you know, potentially your board of directors, potentially your senior leadership and potentially your next level managers. But when it comes down to it, if you really want to bring about that like transformational change or organizational transformation, you know, you need to have those people recognizing that they are heard as part of this process and they also see themselves as part of this process. And so by being able to do that, by pulling out their feedback in advance, you're allowing yourself to do that. I've seen instances where people have come up with the best plan, but because they didn't take the time to engage the stakeholders and ask them how they thought, they resisted it, even if that plan was in the stakeholders' best interest. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't need to be uh, a lot of stakeholder engagement. That's why that stakeholder mapping piece is uh, so important, but making sure that you have those people that have high interest, high influence, and making sure that they're at least on board and then done as a process versus an activity. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Um, so I'm going to invite you now, Anthony, to jump into the um, planning and alignment process and share uh, the high level overview here with us. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is going to be obviously like drinking like a fire hose. If you Google uh, sample strategic planning agenda SME strategy, and we'll actually drop it in the chat for you. But if you Google it, you will find literally the verbatim step by step on this. We have a course where we walk through each of these. Uh, but for today, I wanted to just highlight the, the process that we follow. Okay. And high level, it is 
where are we now? Where are we going? What's going to get in the way? What do we need to do? And how are we going to implement our plan? We try to use very easy to approach, easy to understand language so that many folks who have never done strategic planning can understand really what we're talking about. So where are we now? That means taking an internal and external look of our organization. We have to try to align all of these various perspectives because if we aren't aligned on where we're at, how can we effectively align on where we want to go? So keeping that stakeholder uh, input in there, uh, sometimes you might have dissonance between uh, strategy participants and stakeholders. For example, your managers might tell you that there's a bunch of problems and issues and the leadership team doesn't want to believe it. Well, consider that that person's perspective is reality and you have to consider your stakeholders' perspectives as true to them and then get curious about why that is. Anyways, I digress. Looking at where you're at now, looking at where you wanna go. And that is really, if success was a place, how would we know if we got there so that everybody is ending up in the same place? Uh, the example that we use often is, you know, if, if we're saying, hey, let's all go to California. Well, my version of California is different than Jen's version of California is different than Luis's version of California than it is from Pierre's version of California. One might be Los Angeles, one might be San Diego, one might be five-star hotels, one might be hitchhiking in Airbnb. And so for your team is saying, hey, what does growth look like? Or what does success look like? And then trying to define that really specifically. Uh, the next step there is, you know, what's going to get in the way? The reason we look at what's going to get in the way is so we use a needs-based approach versus a wants-based approach to prioritization. So by everybody listing what's going to get in the way, we can, dare I say, be critical about the biggest needs, the biggest challenge, the biggest impediments to us getting to where we want to go. And then we take that into uh, pri prioritization. So instead of trying to do a bunch of stuff a little bit, let's do a couple things very, very well, accomplish them and move on. And then what does accomplishing them look like? Setting objectives, qualitative outcomes, and goals, quantitative outcomes, and then cascading that into actions. The last piece to consider is how are we going to implement the plan, which is going to be our next section. One thing to consider for you and your teams is often folks spend two days or three days of planning, but they forget about the 1,100 days of implementation. And so building in time, consideration, bandwidth to implement the plan is critical. So what are the actions that you're going to take on an iterative basis? How are you going to engage people? And then the critical capacities, which is, you know, what are the, the skills that you're building? For us, we view strategic plan implementation as not just doing a bunch of stuff, but rather building the capacity in the organization to be successful continuously. Uh, last thing I'll say before I pass it back to you, Jen, is, you know, we had a conversation with a team just before this. We've been supporting their implementation for four months. And they say, you know, what's really cool about the work that you're doing with us is now we're in a rhythm. You know, it's not about accomplishing your three-year strategic plan in three weeks or three months, but rather building a rhythm of communication, putting the right meetings in place, uh, making sure you're working through those issues as they come up. And the faster you work through issues, the faster you're going to be able to really like get to your plan. So, uh, and Jen, anything I missed there in terms of like getting alignment around current future state risks and priorities? No, nothing you missed at all. Um, just to emphasize for the group, though, again, you know, we are really super stressing the process here. Right. And, you know, I can't stress enough. Anthony used the term several times as he was talking about alignment. You know, um, when when an organization does a SWOT scan or SWOT analysis, it's not just for the sake of doing a SWOT scan or a SWOT analysis. It is. It helps you, you know, identify your current state. But more than that, we stress in our process the importance of being aligned around how, you know, the team being aligned around how they see the current state. Um, you know, and so alignment is the thread that weaves through all of this. That's so, so important. Uh, um, you know, because again, we can get through this process without alignment and have a document that says some words, and that doesn't matter as much as feeling aligned in, you know, and driving alignment through this process. Um, so um, as Anthony left us here, the final part in our process is having teams consider how they implement their plans. And oftentimes we then have clients who um, we get to work with then directly on the actual implementation of what they've designed um, in the process Anthony just brought us through. 
Uh, and what we do is we encourage them to think about as well as engage in um, sort of a set schedule with us of activities uh, that deepens these six critical capacities for strategy implementation. So in all of the hundreds of doc, um, strategic plans we've worked with organizations on and their implementation of those plans, we have learned that these six elements are crucial uh, to an organization really getting honest about, you know, assessing themselves within it and then working to grow within each of these capacities um, to be able to really effectively implement the strategies they lay out to implement. So I'll start us here. I'm just going to take us through each of these six really briefly. And again, I will pop into the chat an article that you can read that um, outlines them even more. Um, I also did pop in a, um, the articles or the blog posts that we've written on both uh, stakeholder engagement and the strategic planning process. So by the end of this webinar, you're walking away and we will send you, um, you know, this whole live webinar. Um, but So you're walking away with the um, overall information and also more reading to be able to deepen your understanding. Um, and that's sort of what we do in implementation support, right? So if we take alignment, for example, alignment is what we really strongly focus on in the strategic planning process that Anthony just reviewed with us. We continue to deepen it and work on it in strategy implementation, right? And so what we do is we meet with teams on a monthly and quarterly basis for structured workshops, um, structured coaching sessions, uh, and structured um, project calls and, and, and strategy reviews in order order to maintain alignment and get into that rhythm Anthony um, just touched on, right? Um, part of the rhythm is staying in alignment. And so continuing to um, pull that concept forward into implementation is critical. We're also working with teams at this phase to help them create alignment throughout the entire organization, not only to the one destination, but overall alignment organizationally. Some of the workshops that we focus on and some of the uh, content we focus on in implementation helps to strengthen responsibility and accountability in an organization. Uh, we do things like um, talk about project planning and RACI or RASCI matrices, you know, accountability matrices. So we actually offer tools for teams. Uh, to help them um, increase their capacity when it comes to organizational responsibility and responsibilities and accountabilities. Um, but we're also having these conversations consistently with leadership teams um, to help them think about how to really um, strengthen uh, the accountability throughout the organization consistently. We also have a specific communications workshop we run. And in all of the structured activities throughout implementation, we talk about communication uh, and we encourage teams to get clearer, more concise and more aligned in their communication um, as they drive forward through the organization. Uh, monitoring, tracking, and reporting. We, um, you know, work with teams to develop what's called a goals and action tracker. Um, and um, that's one of the primary tools we use um, for teams to be able to monitor, track, and report their performance to their strategic plan. Uh, and we use those um, with organizations both on a monthly project basis um, and then more thoroughly in quarterly strategy reviews. Um, and again, you know, so we offer these tools and we offer this structure um, but more importantly, um, you know, we are really having these conversations with teams and driving this process of the importance of have, being clear and consistent and concise in our monitoring, tracking and reporting so that we know where we are at in our strategy. Um, all along the way, we're also, by the way, um, you know, working with the leadership teams on um, developing their cultures to support strategy implementation. We're talking about values and behaviors. Um, we have specific follow-up workshops where we do talk about val values and behaviors specifically and um, leave teams with sort of actionable items to continue to strengthen their cultures. Um, and then lastly, leadership and change management. Again, all along the way, we're developing this as a capacity and we also offer specific workshops and tools on how to um, manage change effectively um, and on just effective leadership in general. Um, and the most important thing here is, you know, so there are tools, there's resources, there's coaching in implementation. Um, and there are, as I said, you know, we, we specifically offer specific structural support to make these things come to life on an ongoing basis. Um, you know, but really, and most critically, you know, no pun intended, um, it's important for a team to be 
cognizant of all of these capacities on an ongoing basis throughout the implementation process. Because without any one of these elements, um, you know, being sort of having a presence, it does pose a risk to effective strategy implementation. I mean, imagine trying to implement a strategy while not working on your values, behaviors, and culture. That would be super difficult. Imagine trying to implement a strategy without having clear responsibilities and accountabilities. Nearly impossible. Same with any of these six capacities, right? Um, so in implementation, we stress that it's not just about the act doing the actions you've outlined in your plan, but it's about the process of strengthening these critical capacities to be able uh, to improve your overall organizational effectiveness. And so we offer this model um, and I will, uh, um, as I said, put the blog in uh, the chat here for you to be able to get more specifics on them. Um, you know, and we uh, encourage you to adopt this model as you're working um, either on your own strategy implementation or with other teams to implement. Um, I'll turn it back over to Anthony. Yeah, I think there's kind of a couple of things I want to highlight out of this and, and using this as an approach. Again, it's just like if you go back to those pillars, the, the strategic thinking, the management operations uh, and, and the leadership pieces it is that these are uh, it, it's partially to have a common language so that different people are aligned on different things. It's also to build the systems for your future state not your past. So for example, somebody asked the question about compensation. Well, when was the last time you looked at compensation? Well, that might fall somewhere under responsibilities and accountabilities or communication or alignment, but you might've done it in the past, but did you build it for the future state of the organization? Or we have a company that went from uh, 200 million to 300 million to 400 million. Well, all of their communication structures broke as they grew in scale. So you continually need to make sure that that flow of information is working. As you're making changes, as you're moving faster, as you're making decisions, you need to continuously stay aligned, like on the same page. Uh, someone asked, what's the difference between agreement and alignment? You're never gonna agree on everything. The point is to say, hey, can we all at least understand and see each other's perspectives internally, and then ultimately make a decision responsibility of around what is the facts that we're taking. If you have seven or eight different versions of the truth around a process, well, you don't have a process at all. Um, and then that's why like folks leading it wherever the leadership is in the organization and supporting and sustaining the change, but from a structural and systemic piece versus just doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, someone asked a question, a private message around the different kind of EOS, Rockefeller Habits, 40X, et cetera, um, which we're very familiar with and we're inspired by. I think the biggest difference between those models and what we do is th all of those models focus on the task and the stuff and checking a box, which is kind of regurgitation and no hate on any of those. They're all very good. They all have their process and we've definitely used components of it. What we really, really focus on is the behavioral, the psychological piece so that the folks driving it understand the why they get it it is their idea versus somebody said hey fill out and make sure that these three boxes are are filled out it's like we want people to understand not just the what but the why and that everybody is working on it together as a team there is no chance in hell that you will accomplish your strategic plan without all of these foundational pieces in place and everybody being bought into the strategy so do as much stuff as you want but if folks don't get it your plan's not going to move forward. And this stuff takes time. So when I say, hey, like, what is your budget for implementation? I don't mean budgets on consultants. I mean, how much time are you going to spend four to six hours per month at a minimum just working as a team to like build your ability to drive your organization forward? But once you do that, you're going to go flying. And so I can't emphasize how this is not just about doing stuff, but really building the ability, building the common language uh, and building the skill organization wide, not just at your leadership team level. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing people along with you in the process for certain. So um, we are happy to answer any questions that y'all have at this point um, about our process and or how we use it. Uh, I know we've um, addressed a couple of them uh, already. Uh, if anyone has any, oh yeah, go ahead, Anthony. I, I want to do a reverse Q&A actually before I, I get to ask it. you guys is what did you take away from today? 
Like what, is, what was your number one takeaway from today's workshop that you're going to implement? Um, and I know many of you, like you said, working with teams, working internally, what's the one thing that you said, oh man, this is going to be so helpful as I work with my teams. There's 26 of you uh, in our Zoom. There's about a dozen on YouTube. Um, yeah, what did you take away? And then Jen, if there was any questions I missed from the chat earlier, I know that there was uh, one from uh, about compensation. Yeah. Yeah. And that question was, um, where does compensation fit into this? Right. I'm just want to, oh yeah. How does compensation strategy fit into this process? I don't know if you have any other, other thoughts on that, Anthony. I know you touched on it briefly, but. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's operational in terms of people. It could potentially fit under culture, uh, but it's, you know, fundamentally, if you look at your vision and then you say, great, what do we need from like an org chart perspective and our people perspective? And then can we get the talent that we need to drive our plan forward? And then the compensation strategy is a how to deliver the talent strategy, which is also a how to deliver the vision, which is the why. Yeah. Yeah. All of those hows um, feel super important in the moment. And we, our process really challenges you to pull your head up from that and look at the why and the where, um, and then sort of go back to reevaluate, like, is that how a thing we need right now? Is it, is compensation strategy a way that we can move forward in the one destination we've created? And if so, how, right? Um, so, so yeah, that's, um, that's great. Thanks, Anthony, for for um, lending your thought there. Um, we're starting to see some stuff come in in terms of your reverse Q&A. We're starting to see some responses come in. Um, so Anthony asked, what's a takeaway that you're going to um, you know, take away from today's session and apply? And so here's uh, what we're hearing. We're hearing um, develop a structure on our approach and direction. Absolutely. Structure is key. Um, I mean, what we just put in front of you is what we put in front of the teams we work with, and then we follow it. So it putting a structure in place helps everyone stay aligned to what process you're bringing them through. Um, you know, and that's, that's super important. Um, someone else said definitely implementation, which is 90%. Mark, um, would love to hear, um, you know, any more about like, what about implementation? Um, are you taking away? Um, yes, absolutely. As Anthony said, you know, it, sometimes it takes three days to create a strategic plan and then there's 1100 days of implementation following it. Right. So it is, um, the most time wise significant part, right? Um, we also are seeing a reminder to communicate throughout all capacities. It's about behavior change. Yeah, Laura, absolutely. Um, anything you're seeing in the chat, Anthony, that you want to touch on? I mean, I really love Cynthia's takeaway. The, the beliefs lead to the behaviors, lead to the yeah. results, um, the alignment, uh, making sure everybody's on the same page and then checking for no alignment. Um, you know, I, I joke that it's hard enough to get 10 people to agree on dinner. So how are you going to agree on where you're going to take your, you know, five or 10 or 20 or hundred or $200 million organization. Uh, and so you're never going to agree on everything. Um, and then like building the language it's, it's amazing. And again, I'll, I'll pull up uh, Cynthia's message today, like all of these different strategy models. Some folks have been trained through an MBA. Some people have been trained through a Fortune 500. Some people haven't been trained at all. Some people just Googled all of their training. God forbid you had to listen to me for the past couple of years. And, but uh, everybody has a different language just around like goals and objectives is a simple one. Vision and mission is another one. And so like if you have 10 different definitions, how that can like cause chaos in your organization. And so like building a common language definition, um, client that we talked to today, they had up on their walls, their values and their definition of the values. So it was constantly reinforced. Another client that we have has their vision written on a wall across their location so that everybody reminded, hey, this is where we're going. So just the, the visibility and the transparency and the clarity are super clear. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And then Paul, I'm just typing to you in the, in the chat here. So responding there. Um, is that about addressing the question, Anthony? Uh, yes, I'll answer it actually now that I'm here since, you know, got okay. the mic and 
So yeah. uh, Paul asks, uh, how long is SME typically in partnership with the teams that we're working with? How long does this process tend to take on average from your experience? So, oh, there we go, SME resources, nice. So we have two types of engagement. We have our alignment, which is working on the core strategic planning piece, um, which can be as few as four weeks uh, up until the strategy process, and then kind of basically three months to get the document and uh, provide all the like follow-up calls that are included, um, which is work with, working with us live. And then from there, we do implementation work uh, which is on 12 month contracts. And then certain organizations have us do their stakeholder engagement. So the stakeholder engagement process typically takes three months. The strategic planning process takes, call it a month or two after that. And then the implementation process takes 12 months. Um, so it could be as few as uh, two, uh, as many as 15. Um, and then we have clients that have worked with us for uh, 10 years and we have some that have worked with us for three years on their implementation. So it's really about like what's best fit for you and what's the best need. Um, all of our program options are available online. And then following today's conversation, happy to have a conversation about what's what your options are um, and how we can kind of provide something that'd be a good fit um, for what you need. And Paul, if you want to take that offline, happy to have a, have a chat and I'll drop my email in here as well. Awesome. Thanks for that, Anthony. Yeah. And, um, you know, we also do offer um, some um, resources that are low cost, no cost for you as well. If anyone's interested in checking those out, you can find them on our website and I will pop the um, link in before we wrap here. Um, but ultimately, um, we do offer a um, the part that Anthony covered uh, in terms of the strategic planning and alignment process, um, we offer a 28 lesson course that you can take asynchronously on your own time. Um, and you can uh, come back to the community to interact about it. I'll share more about that in a minute. Um, but ultimately, um, it leads you through how to sort of be the strategy leader of a team through the process of creating a one creating one destination or your strategic plan. So you can find information about that on our website. Um, you can also find find a ton of education and resources on all of the stuff that we've covered, both at the level we've covered it and in deeper dives on our podcast, uh, which Anthony is the host of on our YouTube channel, in our blog, on our website, and um, lastly, in the strategy and leadership community, um, which I do want to touch on quickly. Um, and then I can, I'll come back to the chat and um, we'll address any other questions that we see there. Um, but this webinar um, is hosted by, sponsored by, if you want to say that, um, the SMB Strategy and Leadership Community. Uh, we're an online space that uh, connects leaders to each other to help you elevate your strategy experiences um, and to talk about leadership management, all the challenges that come along with it, and to lean into a global uh, community of other people doing the same work as you. Um, right now, we've got about 440 members. Um, and so, hundreds of leaders globally that are doing this same work that you're doing, um, who are accessible to you in this digital space, um, where you can ask questions, get resources, talk about challenges, get support. Um, and we're always doing events like this. We do monthly webinars, um, we do Q and A's, um, and we're offering a, a, fun, a ton of other fun stuff coming up in the community to um, engage people and connect them to each other. Um, you know, access to just a bunch of resources. Um, it works very much like any other online community you've ever been a part of. Um, if, you know, you, you're on Facebook, you can do the same sorts of functions like reading articles, saving th posts for later, direct messaging with new connections. All of that kind of stuff is alive uh, in our community as well. The only difference is that um, we're just all a bunch of strategy nerds doing it together, um, which I love because I'm the biggest of them all. So um, if you sign up today um, to become a member in the strategy and leadership community, you will get free lifetime membership. We are going to start charging for this service soon, um, but get involved now, get in on it now while it's still a free service. Um, and this just gives you a little um, idea of some of the activities we've got coming up next in the strategy and leadership community. Um, like I said, webinars, more sessions with Anthony where you can pick his brain a little bit, get some good advice. Um, I also publish a playlist every week, every Monday to get you moving and get you uh, in a good mind space uh, mindset for your week. Um, we've got other facilitators who join the community to share their thoughts. We're going to be working with members to spotlight them. Um, and at the end of April, we've got um, our first uh, community series lightning talk coming up. Um, so if you join the community, you'll learn more about that in there as well. Um, we do hope you'll join us. It's a way to stay connected and get connected to other strategy leaders and organizational leaders who do strategy work across the globe. So 
Um, hope you'll consider joining us there. I will pop that link into the chat for y'all all right now as well. Um, and uh, that really concludes what we had planned to talk to you about today. So grateful for everyone being there uh, here today with us. Anthony, do you have any closing thoughts? And then um, I'll go back to the chat and address uh, the questions. Uh, I'll stick around for a few minutes to make sure that um, we close close those loops. Awesome. Yeah, definitely want to answer those questions. No, I, I appreciate you guys. We appreciate you. Like we do this for you and it's so fun. And we're just like grateful that we get to contribute to you because, you know, we know what it means. Um, and uh, just in closing, I guess, say when, you know, when I started the company, I had a belief that if uh, organizations have a clear strategy, it makes their employees happy because they're engaged. If employees are happy, their families are happy. If their families are happy, their communities are happy. And so I firmly believe that strategic planning is our way of changing the world. And it's really cool to see like how many countries are represented, uh, not just in this webinar, but in our podcast and everything. And so really just like the community is truly a global community of folks that are doing cool stuff in their community and uh, for their people. So I just appreciate you being here and the opportunity uh, to contribute to you. I, I don't take it for granted. So. Absolutely. Thanks, Anthony. And thanks everyone for being here. And for those of y'all who did drop questions in the chat, um, I'll stick around and we can chat a little bit about them. Um, but if y'all want to take off, um, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. And Jen, um, I got a couple okay. minutes too, so I'll stick around. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, sweet. So then let's uh, jump back into the chat here. So Mark asks, what are your views on the family business who do not want to question the present, which is profitable for the uncertain future? You've been counting pay, this a pay time now or two. Or pay now, <laughs> pay later. You always pay. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll, I'll say real quick, just around, you know, kind of change management is that no one will change unless it hurts bad enough. Uh, if you go to your doctor and doctor says, don't eat chocolate, you're going to have a tummy ache. And you're like, yeah, I like chocolate too much. Tummy ache's worth it. If you go to your doctor and say, don't eat chocolate, you're going to die. You might stop eating chocolate. And so no one needs to change. Uh, they have to want to change and they have to want to elevate their standards. And so uh, it, it's up to them ultimately. So if there's nothing wrong, like don't fix what ain't broke. Uh, but eventually, you know, it's about being ready for the future and, um, yeah, that's that's all I can say about that one. <laughs> Jen, I don't know if you have any other thoughts, but that's my truest answer. It's it is, I I believe, the actual truest answer. And I think, you know, this just dips back again to the why. Like, you know, I think and especially, you know, family businesses, I think can be um a little bit more emotionally charged in a lot of ways, or maybe differently emotionally charged. So um I think coming back to the conversations around why and what are we, you know, what who is it that we really want to be and why do we want to even be an organization or a business in this world? Um, you know, and, and really staying connected to that to help, you know, move people through the process can can be important. We have a podcast coming out with a gentleman named Rob Ferguson, who runs the Ferguson Alliance. And he gave me this real great piece of gold. The, the podcast out will be in a month. He said, are you a business first family or a family first business? Mm. And depending on your answer will determine how you look at the view. So if nothing's wrong and you're just chilling, then you're probably a family first business and you're just, you know, providing for the family in the time being. If you're a business first family, then you'll make those changes. And I was like, well, I love that. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Um, okay. So Cynthia asked, what does stakeholder engagement look like? Is it a survey? How many can you reasonably include? Um, so yes, we do. Um, we do do surveys as part of the stakeholder um, engagement process we offer. Um, and so what we do is we work with teams to identify who is it that they want to speak to, right? And so we help them identify who those groups are. Um, and then once we've identified that, we set them up with an online survey and we invite people in each of those groups to be able to respond. Um, and we leave them open for a set amount of time, um, typically no longer than a month. Um, but that just helps us get some good initial information from um, the various stakeholder groups. And then um, we have that in our back pocket when we do what we also offer as part of our service, which is um, facilitating stakeholder sessions. And in those sessions, the focus is really to engage people in um, telling uh, you know, in sort of uh, uh, helping us understand what the current state of the organization looks like from their perspective, uh, as well as where do they want to see the organization go. And so we facilitate those conversations. Um, we've done them live in person. We've done them live virtually. Uh, and then we combine the information we collect in those sessions with the survey data 
uh, and we share back with the strategy team of that organization um, sort of the various perspectives we were able to collect throughout the process. Um, so in terms of a survey, how many people can participate? Mm, doesn't really matter, I, you know, I don't think. Um, but in terms of the actual engagement sessions, um, we have found that um, we can absolutely do like little, like many breakout rooms in groups, uh, in person live, you know, to sort of manage larger groups. Um, and Anthony, I don't know how large the largest group you have worked with on a stakeholder session, but I believe for me, it's been around like 35, 40 people live. Um, 140. Okay. And so there you go, y'all. So we've done them with as large as 140. So, you know, our facilitation technique and how we structure the facilitation might look different based on the size of the group. Um, but we, so we can accommodate for groups, you know, smaller groups or larger groups. Um, but if you're facilitating these on your own, that's got to be a consideration for you as the facilitator, right? What can you handle and how do you need to structure to accommodate for group size? But that gives you an idea of what we've seen and how we do it. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and I'll say, you know, we recently just finished a strat uh, strategic planning session for a university and we had, you know, 12 stakeholder engagement sessions with, you know, dozens of folks in it and different kind of groups and things like that. So pulling all of those, we've done that before, but that was just a recent one. Um, so just pulling all of that information and recognizing like the similarities and differences, questions are the same, but the perspectives are different and then trying to be able to kind of distinguish them so it doesn't just become this beige mush of feedback, but rather like actionable things that you can understand who has what concerns where um, is is a challenge and a, and a thing you need to do. But yeah, the, there's no right size. The right size is the people that need to get involved. So if there's a lot of them, then recommend, let's say you have 200 constituents in a single group, maybe break it down into four or five sessions so that folks have enough time to share. That said, some folks have no interest in sharing and they just want to be talked to. And that's OK, too. Just recognizing, just like designing it uh, for the stakeholder need. Awesome. Well, that covers all of the questions that were posed in the chat. Uh, unless did I miss anything, Anthony, if you want to take a quick scroll through? No, I think um, that's everything. I just grateful for everybody. On? You have anything oh. over on YouTube? Uh, no, I don't. No, Any no, questions? we're all caught okay. up there. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, again, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate you. Uh, and we will be sharing the slide, the video from this presentation in the uh, strategy and leadership community. I popped the link in the chat. If you haven't joined us yet, please join us. Uh, it will also be up on YouTube. Um, so look for that. And uh, we'll also email y'all um, the materials uh, since y'all registered for today. So um, really appreciate your time and uh, would love to hear, would love for you to stay connected and tell us um, how you implement any of this if you choose to or how you incorporate anything into your own processes. So um, thanks again so much. Wishing you all the best always. And we'll see you next time. Ooh, love you, Naka, for my friends in Fiji. Thank you, everybody. See you all soon.